Hey guys, how's it going? Sleeping Hollow here, and today we're back with another Blender add-on review. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing the Sculpt Toolkit, which I'll leave, a, of course, I'll leave a link in the description of where to get it on the Blender Market. But this tool has been such a good use to me. Such a good use. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Anyway, sorry. Um, so I've made two sculpts from using this toolkit mainly because I find that it helps your sculpting so much, whether you're a beginner or advanced user I think this is very useful so let me quickly show you guys the two the two sculpts I made so if we go ahead and go to layer one here you go so here's the hound eye if you got if anyone knows half-life you know what the hound eye is and then this is actually the charger which was a cut uh, enemy from the half-life series so as you can see these sculpts I mean okay for the record I'm I'm very new to sculpting I think I've been sculpting for like three weeks now like actually jumping into it and I've made other sculpts before I've used this asset, but I feel like with this add-on, it honestly really helps so much. And as you can see with these, I feel like these came out really well. I'm still working on the charger though, but I mean the details with it. And now I'll show you. One of the major things with this add-on is using um, envelope bones. So what you do is on the on the left here, you can see this is the little tab for it, and you have so many options. But they actually were smart enough to use a, also use a pie uh, menu. So you actually don't have to have this open at all. If we just hit Alt W, there we go. We get everything we need. So as you can see, add envelope bone. Basically what it's used for is it's used to set up like how you want the, the um, how you're going to want your sculpt thing to look like. Whether it's a creature or a person, you know, you use envelope bones to set up the base. And then from there you can convert it into a mesh, which we'll go over. Don't worry. I'm going to try to keep this not as long. I don't want this to be like 20 minutes long, but, you know, a nice 10 minute long review. Um, so, like, jump going back to these, sorry, I'm all over the place, but going back to these, as you can see, I feel like this add-on is a very, it's a must, basically. Because, as you can see, I don't think I could come up with this kind of quality uh, if I just had to start with, like, a, a, a cube or a sphere or whatever. Uh, and it really cuts your time in half, so... Now on the second layer, I have the bone setups I used, you know, the envelope bones to make these. So let's go with that. And here we go. So you can see, especially for the hound eye, it's very simple. Uh, yeah, all these are just envelope bones, which I can just move around, as you can see here. And just, I went ahead and set it up, you know, using a, a reference image in the background. I went ahead, set it up the way it should look. And from there, you know, you just start sculpting and, you know, you do what you got to do. And so from here you can see the charger, which you can see I went to more detail. As you can see, I started with the mouth open. Uh, I went ahead and shaped the way I wanted the mouth to look. And as you can see, I did add bones inside it too, because I just want to make sure that, you know, it the inside of the mouth didn't like leak into the outside and there was like a weird hole or whatever. So I did have to fill that up. But I mean, you can see the, dif the difference in detail that went with the hound eye being a little more simple, the charger being a lot more complicated. But, like, if we go back, you can see, you know, it worked out really well. It's honestly, it's really cool. So let's jump to the third layer, and I'll go ahead and show you how this works. So if we hit Alt-W, now we can start uh, new if you wanted to. If you have, like, some interesting design that doesn't reference anything, you can just uh, start adding bones and place them where you want them. Or you can actually add a base, and they added quite a few. If we can look here, there's a neutral human, there's male, female, hero, and there's a few animals. So if we go to, let's let's just go human neutral. Let's actually go. So as you can see, this is very, very basic. So if you want to try and make a humanoid type character, this is a good start. And of course, you can just go in here afterwards and, you know, just start editing however you want to. Uh, symmetry, let's just go ahead and auto name this. Let's symmetrize it. There you go. I don't know what that would be, but you know, you can see the, how easy this is. And once you symmetrize, of course, it's going to copy over. And then let's say, let's say we're happy with this. Okay. We, this is exactly what we want for our base. So now we go all W again to the pie wheel. And you can see the menu has changed. Now we can convert this to mesh and that resolution, the higher the resolution, the better it'll you know come out. But for this, we can keep it at 200. And usually, I like to um, 
make sure it doesn't delete the original in case I want to keep it in case there's any changes I messed up on once I turn it into a mesh. But then again, you can always control Z. So uh, for now, we'll delete it because we don't need it. So once we convert it, there we go. It's a nice, nice mesh. And then from here, you know, we, we can just start sculpting. Like I said, we don't need to have any of the tools on our screen because all W has it all. So we can just go from sculpt to here. And now in sculpt mode, you'll see it has, it, you know, the pie menu is everything you need. So if we go to pie menu again, it's, we can turn on the dynamic topology tool. And then we can just start sculpting whatever we want. And then right here, you know, you can change the brushes. Like I said, it's all on here. So you literally do not have to worry about having to go into anything. Uh, so yeah, so from there we can sculpt. Now let's say, let's say we want to add another thing to this. And, you know, we've already done the sculpt. We already started. What we can actually do is let's go object mode. And we can just add an envelope bone. So there it is. Let's go to edit mode. We'll move it up. Now we can size it down. You can do this with um, other mesh too if you just want to start with a mesh. Uh, and I'll show you. It's the same process to add them. But let's, okay, let's just, uh, I'll, I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll hit W. We'll go ahead and auto name this so we can symmetrize it. Now let's say that's good. So now let's go ahead and convert this into a mesh. And he, actually, here's a good example. As you can see, it's kind of cutting out. So if we go back. Uh, let's turn this up to 300. No. Let's try 400. And there's, okay, see, so, okay. There's a few other settings we can mess with here. So, size step. I'm still kind of learning this, so I'm not 100% sure about any of these. Actually, it might be the, you know, we're, we're all learning here. So, let's say the minimum is 1. Oh, see, okay, that's definitely not what we want. So how about 20? Oh, there we go. Okay. So if you're getting any of those weird cuttings or whatever, you know, try changing the, what was it? Let me get it here. The minimum step. Yeah, we want to make sure it doesn't cut out anything. So there we go. And now if we want to combine these two, you know, select one, select the other, Alt W. And then we go ahead and Boolean options and add and now there we go, adding them perfectly. There's no weird issues with it. And now it's all part of one. And I actually use this for the hand eye. So if we go back, you can see the, you know, these feet, the little claws. When I first did the original and we had everything else, I went with the like actual beta reference images, which were like more like claws sticking out. But after that, I didn't like how it came out. So I actually went ahead, let me get the other ones, and made these after I started already sculpting and whatnot. And using the method I just showed you, I was able to just quickly throw them back onto this. And now you're wondering, how did I get rid of the first clause? Because, you know, that can be an issue when it comes to having to fix things. Well, they've actually got you covered there too. So let's say, let's say we want to cut off the, oh, well, oh, I have, let me just quickly turn this off. I forgot. Let me turn off background. Okay. Anyways. So let's say we want to cut off the arm. Let's say the arms aren't what we want. If we go Alt W, we have slashing strokes. And there's all kinds of different ones. If you want to draw, if you want to use a line, polygon, whatever you need. So if we take a line down the middle. And now let Blender do its thing. All right. So it could take a while depending, you know, especially if, you're, if your um, sculpt has already gotten really, really detailed. And you're using high resolution. You know, it'll get slower. But as you can see, now if we take this. There we go, it's cut. Now, as you can see, there is no symmetry to this. I'm not actually sure if it actually has it. I'll have to, I, you know, I haven't really looked into that, which I probably should have. But as you can see, what it does is if we want to cut off that one, there you go. And it also includes a face in there, so you don't have to worry about that. So you can just start sculpting, and that's how you can add things too. So if you had, um... You know, another mesh you want to insert into that, you do it the same way we did with this. And there's other tools here. So let's say if we had a cube, bring it up here. Let's say we just want to, like, cut this out. You can go ahead and do that as well. So let's go Boolean. Let's just go Intersect. Well, there we go. So we can have that part. And, you know, it's, it's the same with everything else you expect. So if we subtract, 
There you go. I subtracted what's there. So as you can see, just from this little pie menu, you really have the whole control of the sculpt. So from here, we can go into sculpt mode. Then make sure this is on. And there we go. You know, you have all you have every setting you could possibly need for sculpting. So I I feel like that pretty much goes over it. There's also some other cool things like you can do masking. So if we go to let's say mask. That's just uh let me turn this all the way up. And now we can what we can do is there's a few tools with masking. So if we have this masked, we could we could extract the mask, which as you can see is kind of what it does is it basically creates a new one, then from there you can pull it out. Then from there you can also you know do a nice little soften it. So let's say right there, and then there we go. So if we move this, as you can see, all it did is take those faces and kind of create a new one and pull them out. So if you want to make something else, that's this is a good way to do it. What you could also do, let's go back to sculpt, is you can also mask split it. So it's actually going to take those that part you mess out. And there you go, creates into its own object. Uh, there's a few other ones. Let's go back to sculpt. There's a lot. So we can add, add a deform here. And now if we were to bring it down. And now as you can see, everywhere that isn't masked, you're going to be able to rotate it. So this is kind of a thing where if you have something masked, you'd want to um, you'd want to reverse it basically. What's Why am I blanking on the word? inverse you want to you know you want to make sure the uh, mask is everything besides the part you want to move and like I said if you go to the if you go to the website like I said I'll link I'll leave a link to the description to the to the uh, blender market website for this add-on you can see they have some cool gifts of like the kind of things you could do with it so anyways yeah this this add-on is highly, highly recommended. If you're into sculpting, if you even especially if you want to just get into sculpting, I highly recommend this. I feel like this is such a great use. Um, so quickly, uh, if you guys are done watching this video, you know this is basically the end. I want to show you an example of one. So let's just quickly go turn back on my background image. All right. So what you're seeing here is it's um. It's a concept of an enemy from Half-Life. I, I found this in the um, Raising the Bar book. So I want to try to make it. So the good way to start oops, is go ahead and just add an uh, envelope. And from here, you know, we're just going to just do what you got to do. Just go ahead and get it to like the basic shape you want. So it's... It is pretty kind of tough when you're like just trying to imagine a 3D object using a 2D reference. But okay, let's say this is good. We can move this to one side. Then we're going to go ahead and start making the body. So with the same kind of style. Let's actually... Uh, well, what we can actually do is use Shift A. And there we go, creates a whole new one. So we keep them all in the same kind of, you know, in the same armature object and now from here let's make the body so you can see it, it's a process um and like i said you or i didn't mention before you you don't have to worry about overlapping all it's going to do is create a mesh out of the outside of every single bone so there is no need to worry about that so if i want to get as detailed as i did with the charger what I would do is I would actually go ahead and create a new one and I'd basically want to start drawing out the line the jaw so I'd go like like this and then we can go ahead and just do the top part as well then what we'd want to do is we'd want to slowly start pulling it apart so like we can probably take this and move it out Oh, no, we probably want these two. So you want to like just do this. And when selecting them also, when selecting them, I, I'd recommend going to, um, uh, what's it called? God, I'm so blanking on all this. Um, X-ray, you know, you'd want to be able to see through everything. 
because if you try selecting from here, you can see it gets kind of, I don't know, it's like, it's very inaccurate when it comes to selecting sometimes. See, so I'm trying to select this one, but yeah, so x-ray, it's a lot easier when it comes to selecting. But anyway, so let's jump back to this. Now let's go ahead and we're going to make sure it's symmetrized the other way. And there we go. So that's the mouth. And then from there, we'd probably want to, let's go ahead and make this thicker. We'd want to add the, a bottom one so we can easily just duplicate. So let's say we duplicate this one. We're going to go ahead and just make it smaller. We can put this like right here. So you can see it's it's very it's easy and like I said it's it's all about how detailed you want to be uh, to begin your sculpt. So if we were like if we were happy with this, I've, it's nothing actually. Let me go ahead and do this. There we go. So if we happen to be happy with this, we can just go ahead and convert to mesh, accept. I probably should turn down the minimum steps. We didn't need 30 for this. But there we go. So, yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say about this. It's very useful. It's, it's honestly, for sculpting, I've said it plenty of times, but if you're into sculpting, I highly recommend this. It's very useful. So let's go ahead and let's convert this one to mesh just so I can show you guys. So let's go 200. Let's set this back to 10. There we go. So as you can see for this one, yeah, so you basically don't have to worry about, you know, going through each other. It basically just tries to get all the bones that are close to each other and make sure it, you know, applies correctly. And of course, if not, you can always just go back and fix it again. But I feel like these two results kind of speak for themselves. As someone who just recently got into sculpting, you know, I'm very proud of these, so... Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. I said I didn't want to make it this long, but it turned out it going over the features, it is this long, it is what it is. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.